Hello and welcome back to another video guys. Today we're going to be looking at my 2017 Ford Everest. In particular we're going to be looking at the aerial on the roof which has snapped off. So I'm going to show you how to replace yours. So if this is something you're interested in then stick around. So like I just previously said, we're here to fix the aerial that's on the roof. Um, now you can either purchase these from Ford, which I did. Um, it cost me just over $220, I think it was, to purchase that. Um, you can buy them from a scrapyard. They'll cost you roughly around about 150 bucks. Now I do have to replace the base as well as the aerial. Um, the reason for that is because the aerial has literally been snapped off and taken the thread with it. So the base is pretty much damaged, so I can't use that. So I need the base and the aerial, hence why it's cost so much money. Um, yeah, the cheapest I could get them was $150, and that was from a scrapyard. They had to source it from Tasmania, um, and it was gonna be three days before it got to me. And that was on a vehicle that had done 30,000 kilometers. So just for me, it cost me an extra $70 more um, to buy it brand new from Ford, which obviously then comes with a warranty. So that's why I went with Ford in the end. So that, I guess that's just down to you as to whether you want to purchase from a scrapyard or you want to purchase directly from Ford. Um, but yeah, so today um, we're just going to be looking at uh, replacing it. Um, it looks like a pretty simple job. The way to do it is that you need to access the interior light on the ceiling, um, which then gives you full access to the aerial. Um, you may need a second person to give you a hand while um, they're on the outside and you're on the inside, just simply because you can't physically reach with both hands um, to get outside and inside if you need to. So yeah, just be aware that you may need another set of hands to give you a hand. Alrighty, so like I said before, I purchased mine from Ford. Um, so I needed the base as well as the aerial. Now this is the base. As you can see, now I do have satellite navigation in my vehicle, so the wires are not only for the aerial for your radio, it's also for your GPS and satellite navigation that comes with my particular car. Um, I'll just bring that up for a close up. So as you can see there, it's just got the screw end in and that's what's been snapped off my original aerial on the roof. Hence why I need the new base bit as well. Um, and then this is the aerial that comes with it. So this obviously just screws on and off to the base once it's been fitted, so he says. Well, that's great. So it seems like they're giving me the wrong aerial, which is fantastic. Thanks for that, Ford. Good job. Yeah, it looks like what they've done, um, the base itself, the screw hole, and the aerial that goes on there seems to be the wrong size. So that's great. Thanks, Ford, for that. I suppose I won't be putting the aerial on for now anyway, at least I can fit the base. Alrighty, so for me to complete this task, I've just got myself some anti-scratch tools that I use for my interior of the car. Prevents anything being ripped or scratched. These are highly recommended by me. Um, I just got mine from Super Cheap Auto. They cost me about 20 bucks, I think, for a set. You get all different sizes and lengths and whatnot. So uh, yeah, highly recommend buying these. I just stick them in my toolbox, so they're always there. So yeah, the first thing that we need to do is obviously um, just get above the light here. Um, now this just pops out. I've already had it out once, just have a quick look as to see how difficult this was gonna be to, um, to fit. But it seems to be pretty uh, standard. Um, just pop that out and then you'll see the aerial. You'll just see the bottom of it like that right there, um, which I believe just screws in. Like I said, just take your time, get a nice thin screwdriver push it between the, the metal strip and the, uh, the clip and then it should just pull straight out like so. Um, I'll just show you, because that's been broken, um, you can see that obviously something moisture has penetrated inside and caused that build up right there around the light. So that's the last thing you need. Um, you just need to make sure that if you do have a broken aerial that you're not getting water in there or any moisture that could potentially damage the, uh, the roof lining or the light itself. 
Um, once you've got the light out, you'll see that there is a, a switch there, obviously for the light to come on and off. Just unplug that and that should come straight out. Now once you've done that, um, I don't know, hopefully you can see that right there. I'll try and focus in on that. There you go. So there's the screw to the aerial. So this is my new base aerial piece here. As you can see, that's what I've just shown you in the, uh, the ceiling. Um, so this is the bolt that you need to loosen off. Once you've loosened that off, all you need to do is push, pull that away and it should come off like so. Now, just remember when you put this back on, on the inside, you've got these grooves down here that need to sit into that. So make sure that they're sat in there correctly. So when you push it on, you just have to squeeze it together a little bit just to make them all align, the grooves align with that. And then you'll be able to just tighten that up. And what that will do is just tighten that to the ceiling, the metal part of your roof of the vehicle on the inside. It's as simple as that. Now I have just checked the wires inside of the old one. Doesn't seem to be too much give there. So I think that's gonna be quite a bit of a test to try and get them connected without really seeing too much. Last thing I really wanna do is take this uh, roof lining down so I can get to the back there. I'd rather do everything I can through the hole here. So it might take me a little bit longer um, just to try and find the, the correct connection to get it in there. But um, hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, that was a little bit difficult. I'm trying to, one of the main area, the blue one was pretty easy to do. It was just the GPS system. It was a bit more difficult uh, you just might need a long screwdriver just to get the clip um, and then you should be able to just pull the wire and it should come straight out just a little bit of time but it's better to just take your time rather than um, dropping the uh, the lining of the ceiling okay so i have just removed the uh, screw bolt inside and now once you've removed that clip as well that should just pull out like so there you go it just leaves that little bit of space underneath so obviously the only thing that's stopping the water going through is this plastic seal around the base of the aerial so all I will do is give that a little clean up and then I'll place the new one inside and uh, screw her in so as you can see there guys that's the difference between the two that's clearly been snapped off no thread inside whereas that one currently still the new one has a thread inside that's with the hens so that's the reason why I needed to replace the base on this one. I wasn't able to just buy the aerial. Alrighty, so I've just cleaned up all the mess that was around the base of the aerial. And now all I've got to do is just feed the wires through, which I already have, and just place the base back on, lining it where it needs to go, just like so. And then I just need to go back inside now and bolt her in. Right, so I've just managed to uh, connect the wires now. Now that was pretty difficult. I'll just try and get my camera up there so you can see. But yeah, that was the most difficult part was the GPS connection. Um, I managed to literally stick up a head torch in the roof lining there just so I could see. And then what I've done is I've used one of my um, tools, my um, anti-scratch tool to then hook the wire and place it where it needs to be. Now, if you really needed to, you can actually unhook that clip. If you can see the cl white clip behind the connection there, that does actually come out, which might give you more flexibility. Um, so if you are struggling, I'd recommend that you take the clip out, bring the wire towards you, connect it up, and then clip her back in. Um, but yeah, she was a little bit of a pain in the backside, but um, took me all of about five minutes to do. Just be patient and you'll get there eventually. Alrighty, so I've managed to put the bolt back in. Um, now that plate that goes over the top there, to show the old one, if I can find it. This plate, now that was a bit of a pain in the backside to get on. Uh, you just got to squeeze it and then use try and use two fingers on both ends to push it into the correct place that it needs to be. Um, now I've just done that finger tight at the moment. I will now go on top to check that the aerial base is level and square um, and that she's not sitting squiffy so yep do that and then once i'm happy with that i will then tighten that 
bolt back up and she should be good. So I should be able to just click that straight back in if I just push that up now, like so. Alrighty, so there you go guys. That's a simple uh, job done. Um, obviously save yourself some money if you want to do it yourself. It's not too difficult. It took me all of around about maybe 20, 30 minutes. Um, that's probably including the uh, video that I've shown you as well today. So if you weren't even doing the video and it probably wouldn't take you that long at all. Um, now I have got on to Ford and they've told me that it is the incorrect aerial for that particular base. So they've uh, rang the Melbourne office and they're sending it up for me next week. And thanks for watching again. Um, give us a thumbs up. Always appreciate a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of content. And don't forget to press that bell notification because next time you'll be notified I put a video up. Until then, we'll see you on the next one. See ya.